official may or may not have, have said to journalists, I don't know, I wasn't privy to that. But what I know from watching this conversation this morning is that when, when, uh, when uh, the questioning proceeds, it very quickly goes to areas that are classified. Minister, I was on and that I, call. I was on that call, so I will tell you what this official said. This official said yeah. that there are I factions with within the. Uh, there. Well, I'm, I'm, I was on that call. I, I'm telling you what he said. There are factions within the Indian government that are responsible for undermining the prime minister. That was his suggestion. So if he's told us that, why can't he brief Canadians and the well, committee on that? How is that classified? When, when. The issue is pursued by members of parliament. The vehicle to pursue it, if they wish to, is, uh, is well established in law, and that is the, the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians. But, but why, that is where it needs to be done. But, but why, 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 why is it okay for journalists to be on a call but not MPs? The, uh, the, the procedure has been set up by the Parliament of Canada. Not making any sense. How is the MP to blame and rogue elements are to blame at the same time? If I had to explain that to my kid, how would I explain it? Exactly. How do you explain that to a child? And they can't. Their lies are so bad, a child wouldn't believe them. Hi, and welcome to Bourbon and Bullets. And today we're talking about the ongoing scandal of the affair at wall. Jasper at wall, the convicted attempted murderer and uh, Khalistani terrorist who was given the high honor, I don't know, really, for me it wouldn't be much of an honor, maybe it was for him, of being invited to a, an official dinner in India with Justin Trudeau and some of his cabinet ministers. And now they are scrambling with a lot, piling lie on lie. And here was, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, Ralph Goodall got caught in a press scrum and made an absolute buffoon of himself. Seems to be going around in the Trudeau cabinet. So let's just have a little, another listen at how he tries to extricate himself unsuccessfully from this tangle of lies that he has spun. Okay, explain it in such a uh, way I'm that Canadians can understand it, because so the far they don't. Sorry, I got that sounds like you're just fobbing it off somewhere. No, no, this, this is a brand, can you turn new, it off for a second? brand new and really important dimension well, when are you, of, of when transparency. When is anyone going to get the answers if it goes there? So people want the answer. Elements and the MP could both be involved in this man's attendance. Is that what you're saying? That's that, that's what a number of people have speculated. Well, why are you so saying? what do you say though? I'm not. That's the point. I'm not speculating, because because that uh, that is contrary to uh, best serving the. Uh, uh, the responsibilities that I have to discharge. Well, I then, don't well, then why put a government official up to tell yeah, the media yeah. that? Then why that? Safety. It makes it look like he's doing an apology job for you guys. No, uh, look, <laughs> look, a public official, uh, when they when they engage in providing information, offering advice, presenting information, it's motivated by one thing only. And that is serving the public interest of but Canada. But the Prime Minister's like office facilitated that conversation with journalists I, that day. I have uh, no knowledge of that whatsoever. Well, I'm you telling you, I was the there. Is the MP part of the rogue elements? Or is, me? The rogue is the MP part of the rogue elements? I have. You, again, you want you want me to speculate about uh, operational Don't details? Just no, tell I, us. Is, no, is he I part can't. of a faction? I I can't. Is Mr. Sarai part of a faction? Isn't it? I, I have no knowledge of Mr. Sarai's circumstances. Thanks, Mr. Sarai. Mr. Sarai. Ah. So we just heard from Mr. Goodale. Are you a part of these rogue elements from the government? No. How then, when you hear the rogue elements theory, what do you think? How did you not know about Mr. Atwal? Did you know about the government? How did you not know about Mr. Atwal? How did you not know about Mr. Atwal? Why did you not know about Mr. Atwell, Mr. Sarai? Are you part of the rogue elements? Well, as Ned Flanders might say, that's a doozy of a dilly of a pickle, isn't it? That the Liberal government and blunder boy Trudeau has gotten himself into. On the one hand, they say it's a massive conspiracy on the part of the Indian government trying to discredit him for his affiliation with the Sikh extremists in his own government, thereby, thereby creating and of course India vociferously denies that and he's so he's created out of his own mess the mess of his own making an international incident 
they uh, are still maintaining that Randy Sarai, I think that's his name, isn't it? Last name Sarai, it was Chris, is the man you just saw, the one of the liberal Sikh MPs, who originally fell on his own saber, saying that, oh yeah, he in, he invited uh, Atwal to this, actually two events he was invited to, and so he took the blame for that. But now a CSIS official uh, has come out and told journalists that, no, he, that he's the one that leaked the idea of the Indian conspiracy theory and Sarai saying that he knew nothing about it. And so now they're trying to say it's a little bit of column A, <laughs> it's a little bit of column B. And yeah, it's it's really that bad. As you saw Ralph Goodall making an absolute ass of himself trying to spin lie after lie and nobody, this is too much even for the liberal press to buy. Not, however, our faithful friends at the Ministry of Propaganda, I mean the CBC. Writing on CBC's website, longtime political hack Neil McDonald said, oh yeah, I mean, you know, this Jasper Atwal thing, it's, it's, don't, don't get excited about that, it's nothing. It was, obviously it's a conspiracy by the Indian government. I mean, you know, okay, yeah, the, the Liberal MP may have invited him, but there's no reason to think why that couldn't have happened, that the Liberal MP, the Sikh Liberal MP, could be working in, in conjunction with the conspiracy on the part of the Indian government. Or, I mean, is that what he's saying? A, a rogue liberal MP is working with the Indian government? Or did they just have, was it coincidence? They just happened to have the same agenda. Or they, they just happened, he invited him and it just happened to work with the conspiracy that the, uh, the Indian government was, was putting together. Uh, yeah, that makes about as much so sense as it sounds. Now, to their credit, even though they got, you know, the hack, Norm MacDonald, who's been promoting liberal governments for you know longer than I've been alive. The rest of the CBC, they they're like the rest of the liberal journalist pack. It's just it's too big a lie to swallow. And look at this, even the most liberal propaganda show that there is. This hour has 22 minutes. Even they couldn't get on board with Blunderboy. Trudeau just returned from his first official visit to India. The trip was supposed to strengthen ties, but it was by all accounts. A disaster. Now, that's just not me saying that. A Washington Post headline actually read, Trudeau's India trip is a total disaster. <laughs> Critics allege that the trip was more of an extended vacation since Trudeau met with almost no Indian government officials, but he did find time to take a few pictures. <laughs> he didn't exactly get the warmest of receptions. A CNN headline read, Justin Trudeau snubbed by Indian government on official trip. Prime Minister Modi didn't even meet Trudeau at the airport. Instead, he was met by the junior minister of agriculture. In Canada, our parliamentary secretary of agriculture is Jean-Claude Poisson. I don't even know who that is. But if they sent Jean-Claude Poisson to pick me up at the airport, I'd feel snubbed. Normally, when the prime minister travels, people only talk about his socks. <laughs> he sure fixed that. Some people felt he overdid it on the traditional Indian dress. And by some people, I mean everyone. For example, this is how Stephen Harper and Jean Chrétien dressed when they visited India. Justin, he went for a more on-the-nose approach. One Indian headline said that Trudeau was dressed too Indian even for an Indian. And it'd be like if Prime Minister Modi came to Canada dressed like this. Crazy. Trudeau's visit was the most embarrassing thing to happen to India since Apu. Trudeau was there to sell Canada, and he did his best to tell them about our country like only our Prime Minister can. And we celebrated the 100th anniversary of Canadian Confederation. Actually, it's 150 years old, Justin. <laughs> Not his best work. He did come back with a trade deal, however. Here he is announcing it. We're able to announce today uh, over 5,000 new jobs in Canada uh, and uh, over a billion dollars of investment in Canada. Well, that's pretty good, right? A billion dollars invested in Canada? That makes the whole trip worth it. The Prime Minister actually misspoke there. 250 million to Canada, 750 million to India. Oops. So, India is investing a billion dollars in Canada. Canada is investing 750 million in India. Well, same thing. At least he didn't do any embarrassing dancing. <laughs> At this point, you'd think it couldn't get any worse. Well, <laughs> you'd be wrong. 
It was revealed that a liberal MP had invited a convicted attempted murderer to a reception in India. This man, pictured with Sophie Trudeau, was convicted in 1986 of attempting to assassinate an Indian cabinet minister on Vancouver Island. Some world leaders worry about assassins overseas, but not Justin. He brings his own! <laughs> So after being ignored, Trudeau was finally getting some attention from the Indian press. Mr. Trudeau, I want to ask one question. Why did you invite a Khalistani terrorist for your reception? Eventually, Prime Minister Modi did show up to hug Justin. Of course he did. It was the only way for Modi to get him to go back home. And look at the guy in the back. His hand is already on the car door handle. Hey, Justin, your Uber's here. Time to go! Justin's trip to India seemed like a panicked, desperate attempt to court Sikh voters back home in Canada. I wonder why that was. <laughs> Justin, if you want to woo Canadian voters, the best place to do that is Canada. I tell you, when your own Ministry of Propaganda has turned on you, you know things are bad. And you gotta wonder, the liberal, the liberal backbenchers, how long are they gonna put up with this mess? I mean, are they... I mean, are they gonna walk? Or, you know, are they gonna do sort of a, a Stockwell Day situation, you know, when uh, in 2002, when st part of the Conservative caucus, well, then the Canadian Alliance caucus, sort of separated themselves and sat independently because of Stockwell Day's increasing incompetence as leader. And so, I mean, and this is about a thousand times worse than anything Stockwell Day did. And Trudeau is actually prime minister, not leader of the opposition. And you got to wonder, I mean, are there some liberal backbenchers that are saying, hmm, you know, if I want to continue to have a political career, what am I going to do here? Because I think the obvious, I think the obvious thing to do, if you're any sort of an intelligent person, if you're thinking, if you have an ounce of integrity, is that you either cross the floor. I mean, I can understand, actually, if you don't want to cross the floor. That's understandable. You, your constituents elected a liberal. But you can sit as an independent, as Hunter Tattoo is, the, M, the former liberal MP from Nunavut, and, and then force, a, force a, vo a vote of no confidence. If he loses 16 MPs, I say 16, not, I mean, if he lost 15, he wouldn't have a, a majority anymore. But however, we know that Elizabeth May is basically a liberal seat. So he, if 16 liberal MPs sit as, independ sit as independents, there could be a no confidence vote. And oh my God, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be Christmas all over again. And any hopes that Trudeau and his cabinet may have that this scandal is just going to blow over, I think they are widely mistaken because it wasn't just this hour has 22 minutes at the Ministry of Propaganda that lambasted the president, uh, the president, the prime minister. Uh, yeah, thank God he's not president of the United States. Then we'd really be in trouble. No, even the serious, so-called serious journalists. No, actually, I shouldn't say that. Chantelle Hebert, even though politically I don't agree with her, she is actually a, an objective and informative reporter and opinion maker. Um, but anyway, so the round table at the, at the uh, what do they call it, the at-issue panel at CBC, even then, even they are not able to spin anything in Trudeau's favor. In fact, they were aghast at the ridiculousness of the lies and the scandal as it grows and how the liberals are just piling on. A conspiracy theory, a convicted attempted murderer, and a combative press conference. As Katie Simpson just told us, the backlash from Jasper Atwal's invitation to private events with Justin Trudeau in India has gone sort of from bad to worse. Her thoughts on what we're calling the Atwal affair turning to at issue. For the second time this week, really the third, actually, if you think about it, Point. where it seems like the government doesn't quite know how to manage this or uh, shut it down, because it does seem to just keep going, no. and, I, and I'm not sure how they stop it. It's more than that. It's they keep making it worse. This story has gone through several stages, from the initial embarrassment of the, of the tour itself uh, to this catastrophic error, if that it was what it was, of inviting uh, this accused, uh, a convicted attempted murderer to the Prime Minister's dinner, uh, to the uh, embroiling of India in this and making uh, India uh, get quite out of, nose out of joint as a result of this, of this strange, you know, midnight briefing from a a senior civil servant, uh, but now what we're seeing is is this kind of comic business where they cannot get their story straight. They can't decide who to blame. Yeah. They they refuse to take accountability where it belongs, which is in the prime minister's office. And we're now getting into things where where 
uh, having, having propped up this civil servant to give this secret briefing to journalists, they're now in this ridiculous position of saying, but he can't give the same briefing uh, to MPs. They have no good answer for, for that, which is why Mr. Goodell looked so pathetic today. Chantal, it, it is strange because, uh, you know, it, it is the liberal MP's fault for inviting Atwal and then the senior official briefing reporter says that it might be a conspiracy between infactions of the Indian intelligence agencies. Like, can it be both of those things? Is it one of those things? Is this story just spinning out of control? It might, but if you're looking at communications management, uh, you see two things. One, uh, dual messaging tracks that uh, run into each other. Mm -hmm. It's the MP made an invitation that he now regrets. Meanwhile, in Ottawa, the PMO offers up a senior uh, official to brief journalists. Yep. It's not that someone dug him out uh, of some hiding hole and then the senior <laughs> official said things. He was put on offer mm -hmm. by the PMO, which to me translates into it was Panic City last week when this story broke and uh, a, a bad good idea was implemented. How you dig yourself out of this? I don't think you can. You can only hope that time will will make this go away. Uh, 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 but at some cost, I think, to the senior government official who uh, got himself embroiled in this. He, he, he's an adult. He went and did this briefing, said what he said, uh, and uh, will probably pay a price for that. Well, there's where Chantal Hebert's observations go from astute to spinning it for the liberals. Why should a senior government official have to pay the price for the utter incompetence of the prime minister and his senior cabinet ministers. I mean, it's, it's absurd. And it just shows that as a member of the Ministry of Propaganda, she can't imagine that the prime minister and his cabinet would have to pay a price for it other than some uncomfortable months in the media spotlight. And eventually it'll just go away and a senior public official will be summarily retired and that'll be the end of that. And then, then everything will just go on as, as it was before. How about the fact that this government is hopelessly incompetent, has embroiled Canada needlessly in an international incident with a top 10 economy and a world power, an emerging world power, a country, you know, the world's largest democracy, as they say, although I guess it's, I mean, you know, it's not a perfect democracy, but okay, the world's largest democracy, 1.3 billion people. And now we're, you know, Canada, to save the reputation, which is beyond saving of sock boy, they've decided to punch that world power in the nose. And, you know, only because, you know, Trudeau decided to go on a family vacation and play dress up, and that's where we're at. I mean, and so a government official has to pay the price for it. That's her reasoning. The government has blamed Liberal MP Randeep Sarai for inviting Atwal to official events during the Prime Minister's trip to India. A senior intelligence official also told reporters that rogue factions in India played a role in getting the would-be assassin to the functions. Today, the Prime Minister suggested both theories are factors in the debacle. The MP who extended this invitation uh, has taken responsibility for extending that invitation. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I recognize that uh, our intelligence agencies do good work. But a former director of Canada's spy agency questions why a senior security official is speaking to reporters. If, that is, if it is true, it is very sensitive information, and I am. it would seem to me that the only reason for doing that would have been considerable political pressure to do it. So Randeep Sarai wasn't enough of a bone, obviously, to throw. Did I call him Randall early, earlier? If I did, well, all right, it's Randeep. Anyway, so that backbencher MP obviously was not going to cut it. So they dug up this senior intelligence official to leak the story, tell a story to reporters. And now, as you heard earlier, some in the media are saying, well, this is the guy that's going to pay the price for it. And if you listen to this defense al analysis, he's saying this is highly unusual. So clearly... This guy has been told, you know, you got to do like Randeep and fall on your sword and you'll be taken care of. But what happens when nobody's buying this story? Nobody's buying this story out of the gate. So that's not going to get any like. So their panic attempt to try and cover this up is just has just made it worse, just like Watergate. I mean, no one ever learns from Watergate. The cover up is always 10 times worse than the scandal. Although in this case, actually, that's not true. The scandal was bad enough and the cover up has made it a thousand times worse. That's how bad this is. 
Now, may I remind you, while this whole scandal has been unfolding, it's already come out weeks ago that Atwal has known the Prime Minister for years. In fact, he boasted of his friendship with the Prime Minister, and there was photos of him taken in, you know, in a very casual setting uh, years before he was elected uh, Prime Minister, or in some cases, in one or two cases, even before he was elected Member of Parliament. So they have a long, now he's trying to say, oh, well, you know, he was just some guy I knew. And then, of course, the Ministry of Propaganda, I guess, who haven't quite gotten the message from some of the others, or, you know, some of the less senior clerks there, the, some of the senior uh, drones down there in Sector 7G at the Ministry of Propaganda are still trying to spin it for the Prime Minister. And they come out with this story again online at the CBC saying, oh yeah, this Jasper Atwal, he, he doesn't know the Prime Minister. He just he just loves going around taking photos with prime, with, with politicians. That's all. Just, move along. Nothing to see here. So, of course, the opposition are not letting this go as, as well they shouldn't. And as we've seen, the Prime Minister, Blunderboy, doesn't just, he doesn't even like answering questions in question period under the best of circumstances, and he certainly doesn't like these circumstances. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all the clips of uh, question period in, in, in the House of Commons and Trudeau doing his, his abject worse, just avoiding questions. Basically, he's decided that you ask a question, he'll just go, he'll just list liberal talking points that have absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with the question in hand. And most of his cabinet fall, follows suit. Ralph Goodda Goodell did actually try to answer the question because, well, he's been around forever. And I guess he's, it, he feels that it's a little bit beneath him to sort of shit, you know, he's not like the rest of this, the bimbo cabinet that, that Trudeau has appointed, who for the most part have absolutely no political experience. You know, he's a political veteran. He's been in the trenches slugging it out before, so he probably likes to get his hands dirty and figured he could handle this, but he didn't. He got his ass handed to him again because it's a ridiculous assumption what he's trying to sell. And uh, all right, so let's take it's a look. It's really quite astounding that today the Prime Minister of Canada confirmed that the claims are true that the Indian government conspired on the Atwal affair. He said that in the House today. Media reports revealed that the Indian government actually asked Canada to review the invite lists ahead of time, but the Prime Minister's office said no. Can the Minister confirm they refused to collaborate with the Indian government ahead of this trip? Mr. Speaker, in fact, there were uh, uh, elaborate efforts made uh, consistently through the, all of the preparations and the trip itself by the RCMP, by CSIS, and by all of the appropriate agencies in global affairs and in the Government of Canada to make sure that every precise detail of the relationship between Canada and India was properly performed and exercised in every respect. Honourable Member for Durham. Mr. Speaker, the only elaborate efforts made are the elaborate efforts to cover up the disastrous trip from the Prime Minister yes. to use a national security adviser to spin the media on a conspiracy theory against our friends in the Indian government. We learned that they wanted to actually collaborate with Canada on security, but they refused, and now the Prime Minister is blaming India by saying what his national security adviser said was true. Will the Prime Minister or will the Minister apologize to our friends in India for this scandalous accusation? So what's next for Blunder Boy? It doesn't seem like any of his Liberal backbenchers, although it's early days yet, things may spin out of control and get worse and they may, as I said earlier, they may decide to sit as an independent caucus. However, I, as liberals, I somehow think that's unlikely. There are a few, there are a few very close to center and even a couple that formerly ran as conservatives. So there are some, but that's not, that's not 16. That's not going to do it. You're talking one or two. But for the, and for the most part, I just don't believe that liberals have the integrity to remove themselves from Trudeau's caucus and put himself, put the Prime Minister in the position of facing a non-confidence vote, doing the right thing, in other words. So we're going to have to sit this out till October 2019, I'm afraid, as much as I would dearly love to see the boy blunder faced 
with the consequences for the for a change of his own utter incompetence. This is a trust fund baby who has a famous name, who has lived in a bubble his entire life. He came to power with absolute media adoration, and now he's seen it all dissipate through his fingers, all at his own do, uh, undoing. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. Thanks, as always, for watching and listening to Bourbon and Bullets. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Help me fight YouTube censorship and keep this channel going. Thanks again.